MPs retiring at the next election are saying their farewells to the parliament, adding to signs the Prime Minister is preparing to call the election. The Senate will sit well into the night to pass new voting laws. And the parliament has been gripped by skittish behaviour on what could be one of its final sitting days. Political editor Chris Yulman. There's a weird end of days vibe in the national capital at the moment. They like me very much actually, yeah. <laughs> Not as much as you like me, it's true. Twelve green bums on seat. I prefer bottoms. Like, I don't want it to be about sexual liberation, young people. The coalition's brawling over the ideology embedded in a school anti-bullying program. The author of the program uh, has gone before conferences saying uh, that this is uh, this program is about Marxist ideology, about sexual liberation of young people. They form their opinion on it without talking to the schools, without talking to the teachers, without talking to the families of the children involved. The man who once spoke for his party on electoral matters has disavowed Labor's opposition to Senate voting reform. I strongly support reform of Senate voting practices. I am made sad by my party's position. Division required ring the bells for one minute. That brawl in the upper house will drag into the wee hours. We're here for a long time. You know, we're going to be here for a long time. Uh, bring your pillows, bring your mattresses. And in the lower house, retiring MPs have been given very little notice that it's time to say goodbye. This was from Kate. She so wanted to be here today. Even though the government says the election could be as late as October. As this is one of my last opportunities to speak in this House, I would like to take the time to reflect. And old hands go with some regret about the current state of play. The combination of shallow journalism and shallow politics is ruining our governance. The main game for Labor is to take some paint off the Prime Minister by tying him to conservative causes like the push to defund the Safe Schools program. When you give in to the bullies at the extreme right, they come back wanting more. The way that he has sought to describe any critic of the Safe Schools program as being an extremist or an ideologue or worse is utterly unworthy. The Prime Minister has his hands full with his party, his march to the polls and crafting a tax plan. And in the last 48 hours, it's become clear that there's been a communications breakdown between his office and the Treasurer's over whether personal income tax cuts are in or out. Cut personal income taxes, cremated. The only defence is attack. Just how many more taxes, Mr Speaker, will those opposite have to put on to keep pace with their addiction to spending? The Treasurer's lot will become easier when he has a plan of his own. Chris Yulman, ABC News, Canberra. For more National Affairs correspondent Greg Jennett is in Canberra. Greg, there was a touch of the erratic around Parliament and also a finality. Will politicians next return to Canberra for the budget on the 10th of May? Well, that remains the government's stated schedule, Karina. But as many of the retiring MPs noted while giving their valedictory speeches in the House of Reps here this evening, they do not expect to get a chance to speak in the House again. So if the government does go for a double dissolution election and if it sticks with the 10th of May as budget night, that means there are just two sitting days left for this parliament and they would have to be spent doing the necessary things around the delivery of the budget and going to see the Governor General, etc. So uh, that leaves an all-nighter tonight and then between now and election time or, or budget night, if that be the case, seven weeks of phony campaigning, Karina. So how will the government spend those seven weeks, Greg? Are we likely to see any policy announcements? It expects to tap out at regular intervals a number of announcements, if only to counter the perception that it's got a, a gaping void, particularly on economic policy. We're told one might address how the Federation works, for instance, but they'll come out at intervals all the way up to budget night. And however the government executes it, it will be important that they communicate clearly and concisely. That hasn't always been the case, not in recent days anyway, when it comes to their intentions with personal income tax for instance. So that's something to be worked on before campaign proper, Karina.